Well, the focus shifts back to MLS and the postseason, and it's back to the future. At least, that's the type of night it's going to be. Welcome to Galaxy All Access. Joe Tutino here. Nice to be home once again. Let's get you up to date on all things Galaxy right now. First off, the Champions League. The Galaxy played to a scoreless draw Wednesday night at Bayamon, Puerto Rico, facing the Puerto Rico Islanders. The point puts the Galaxy at 7 and a top group 5 by 4 points over El Salvador's Isidro Metapon with one game remaining for L.A., Metapon will face Puerto Rico one more time on the road, and that result could go a long way towards telling the importance of the final match of the group stage. Should Metapon defeat Puerto Rico, it would put them at six points, and the final group match could be nuts in El Salvador. Back in Major League Soccer action, the Galaxy are in third place right now in the West, two points back of second place Seattle. It's important to share, though, that Seattle has a game in hand at the moment. Saturday, the Galaxy hosts Toronto FC, the same club that upset them during the Champions League quarters in the spring. That's been the highlight of Toronto's season, as they've missed the playoffs in every year of their existence, including this one. Also Saturday night, there will be a, a bit of nostalgia going on at the Home Depot Center. The club will be honoring the 2002 team, the Galaxy's first MLS Cup champions. Today, we're going to give you a couple of different perspectives. I was in the broadcast booth alongside Rick Davis, my broadcast partner, for three Galaxy finals. My current broadcast partner, Ralph Perez, he was on the coaching bench. I called it. He witnessed it. Ralph, how are you doing today? Doing real well, Joe. Um, uh, you know, thinking back, you know, gosh, it's 10 years ago and how the time elapses so fast. It, it does seem like just yesterday, doesn't it? Uh, no question. And, you know, and I was, and, you know, I was thinking about it, you know, in the fact that in my mind, you know, it, it, you know, 99 and 2001 are very fresh in your mind, getting to those finals and losing and, um, and you're thinking in your mind, okay, you know, what, you never know what's going to transpire on that championship day how the game is going to go or how it's going to unfold. Let's talk about the team itself and the season first off. Let's start off with the fish, Carlos Ruiz. The club had been searching for that one striker to get the offense going consistently. They thought they had it in Luis uh, Hernandez the year prior. You remember that? That didn't work out. So you go with a little-known player out of Guatemala. How'd that happen? Well, it's an interesting story, Joe. I mean, it started out where, you know, we, 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 were, we were on the search for a, a forward uh, there was conversations at that time uh, trying to maybe make a deal because uh, Dallas at that time was trying to get rid of Ariel Graziani, who was a, was a prominent mm -hmm. forward. You know, we were considering that one. And then also the fact of the matter was that uh, we were watching Carlos play up at the at the Rose Bowl in some, some qualifying games there. And uh, we were driving. I remember distinctly, uh, you know, myself, Zach Bell, and Ziggy, we were doing a training camp down in in San Diego, of all places, at Chula Vista, at the training center, and we were driving back and forth to the games. And uh, lots of time for conversation on the debate on the, which way to go in that one. And, uh, and and I think the head coach, Ziggy Smith, really went with the decision that we're going to go with the younger, unproven guy, and uh, it obviously turned out to be a great decision. You know, while the records show the team was kind of average out of the gate through the first half or so, but but as I remember it, I, I never felt that you guys were panicking. I know you guys were tinkering a bit, but it wasn't a situation to where you really felt there was something wrong with the roster. No, I think one of the things that, you know, helped us to feel good about the team, to be very honest, was that, uh, you know, we had, that year had gone to Chile, and we played five games down there, and we didn't lose a game, and we played good competition. And uh, we saw then that, the, that this was a good group and that uh, we had something there going in, in the group and brought some new players into the mix and, and had a good returning nucleus. So it was the right, the right blend, and I, and I think that the group was really uh, motivated over the fact that we were so close in 01 and, and losing in overtime on the De Rosario goal that we, we knew that uh, we could get back to the final again. There was a strong belief in that. Talk to me about the tinkering with the formation. We start the season 4-4-2, but then at some point you guys decided to go to a 3-5-2. Why? Well, I think it, it just seemed to work better for us with the personnel that we had. And, and uh, you know, it, 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 it was a situation where it would help us in midfield, give a little more cover to Mauricio. Uh, we wanted to give him less defensive responsibilities and give him more freedom to go forward. You know, we had some players that could do the job with any time you go with a 3-5-2 to play wide and, and get up and down. So, I mean, it, it was, you know, it was an interesting start, you know. I mean, I I watched highlights of that year, and uh, 
you know the highlight tape and you know if you remember the first games i mean they were they were it, it was i mean it was like anybody was saying it will anybody on the galaxy score besides carlos reese i mean he mm-hmm. had gotten game winners after game winners uh continually uh you know i remember the very one against eddie pope when he turns him at the rose bowl and, and buries one and you know it was on and on they, the kids started out hot and just the momentum just kept going all the way through I do remember the Galaxy did have one problem. It was a it was a good problem though. You had two good goalkeepers. You had Kevin Hartman and Matt Reese, both young goalkeepers on the rise, pushing each other to do uh, better each time out. And for a time, you guys platooned uh, both those goalkeepers. But in the end, Kevin Hartman won out as the as the consistent starter. Can you talk about that decision and how how that was made? Yes. Uh, the good thing that I think with with that staff and that team was that there was a lot of uh, always good meetings in, in underneath the Rose Bowl in Coach Smith's office about the team, what we're going to do for practice, and so forth. And one of the things that we really, you know, battled about was that, you know, we saw that Matt was coming along now because Matt came to the team in 98. Mm-hmm. He was he was challenging Kevin seriously for the job, and it was a good battle. Uh, both guys had uh, different qualities, you know, and... Uh, it, but sooner or later, a decision had to be made: who's going to get the nod, and who's going to really be the guy that's going to carry you through. And I think we went with the experience and, and and gave Kevin that the job, even though Matt was, you know, I I felt was was worthy of consideration to be the starter. Uh, you know, it was a decision that we finally made and went forward with. And obviously, I, I think you know, got to give Kevin all the credit in the world. He really stepped it up on the on the latter stage and, and the push for the playoffs and so forth. Uh, Kevin at that time was one of the best shot stoppers in the league, if not the best. Well, no, no question. Uh, no question about it. And, and uh, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, for me, I think one of the things that was evident to us all was that um, I think the competition made them both better. And, and that's always a, a good thing to have within your team, you know, is to have uh, – you know that ability to you know to really um, uh, have co- daily competition for for starting positions. So we get back to the final, and of course we've been to this rodeo before. The club did it before we were part of it in '96 in that first season where they dropped the uh, result to DC United after leading with about 20 minutes to go. In '99 they lose to DC United once again. In '01. They get stung by the golden goal, Dwayne De Rosario, as you mentioned earlier. You also talked about the '98 team because I remember you and I have had those conversations before, and you felt that might have been the best of the teams on the early going. Well, you know, I think that you know one of the things, as as you know, and reflecting on that season, was that you know we were in games, where things were close, but you know the the '98 team was just on a on a roll throughout, and unfortunately, uh, just couldn't get over the hill there on the semifinals with Chicago. But I, I think this team, you know, as this, as month to month, when I reflect back on it, you know, we really kind of, you know, got out a little slow. I, you know, I remember like basically the, you know, one of the things early in the early months was a lot of overtime games. And mm-hmm. then we kind of got a little better as, 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 as each month, but it wasn't really until the summer where we really caught our, our, our stride, you know, and really caught our, 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 our momentum, you know, and uh, and part of that was that, you know, the way our Kobe Jones came back from the World Cup, I think he came back with a motivation, obviously with the success of the U.S. team, and, uh, you know, he came back really fired up to energize the team, and, and I think that really got us going because, uh, you know, we really got good in, in July, you know, and, and, and August, you know, I think reflecting back uh, I, I think you know we we only lost like three games in those two months so knowing the club has failed before in the finals and of course you you had to deal with the sting of it being on the bench with Siggy for a couple of those prior to that what was happening leading up to that final match in the coaching office how were you guys preparing differently or were you well I think one of the things that you know was really happening within the team when I reflect back was that we were getting goals from different guys we had some really good attacking people you know, we had a really good nucleus of players like Victorine and Peter Vine and Simon Elliott in the in the midfield with Sien. You know, you had Fish scoring goals. You had uh, really a, a nice comeback year for Alexi Lalas. I, I agree with him. He, you know, he came back rejuvenated, uh, a new team, a new a new uh, situation, uh, a positive one for him. I think it was something that really kind of got him. Uh, 
fired up to be around the, our team in LA. You know, he hadn't had much success in MLS up to then, and and uh, he was really a, an experienced player as well. So I think you know it, it was a situation where as we got closer towards the towards the end of the year, I think we got more familiar with each other. We got more. Uh, uh, I think most importantly, uh, I thought we got really good defensively, and uh, and and then we were ready. I, I felt so sure that we were ready for the playoffs when the playoffs were going to start, and that's that's always the key. I think when you when you talk about it, because it's a long season, and and you're team's belief that now as we get into the new season, the playoffs, that you know you really have a strong belief that you can achieve uh, the MLS Cup championship. And, uh, and there was a strong belief because, I mean, it was a franchise that um, knew they could get there, but the, the question was, can you get there and win it? That's the key. Well, it's funny because I think you and I had that belief. The team obviously believed in themselves, and the Galaxy fans were excited about getting back to the final. But as as I remember it, though, under the circumstances, you're playing at Gillette Stadium. It's New England Revolution's home ground. All of a sudden, we have 60-plus thousand fans on hand. And outside of the Galaxy room, it seemed like maybe the Galaxy were the underdogs going in. Well, I think, you know, there was kind of a uniqueness to that Joe I mean I, I wasn't there in 96 when they lost I was there as a fan uh, so they had played there once and then they had played there again uh, well, we played there again in 99 so now you're there for the third time obviously a new stadium so we're thinking okay the old one's knocked down well, this might be this might be the a, a, a better situation for us get rid of the you know uh, uh, a stadium that seems to be maybe not a, a positive place for you and and one of the things that we, I remember most is two things. One that I felt that that was going to put some pressure on them. That being the host team and 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 hearing that the crowd was going to be great numbers. And two, it was a little bit of a you know for that time of year the weather really felt good for us. You know mm-hmm. it was it was a great day, uh, a nice day weather wise. And I and I you know it was really different. Stayed in Providence, you know, and, and I thought that that had a difference to it as well. Uh, and uh, it, the preparation I felt, you know, going into it, uh, you know, I remember the night before, you know, coach coming, we had a lot of guys getting awards, so we were waiting for them to come back from the gala because they have the gala on the Saturday. And, uh, you know, Ziggy coming in with his tuxedo and a couple of the other guys coming in, and we were waiting for them. I had the other group, the whole team waiting. And, and you know everybody gave them a, an ovation when they walked in, and I could just feel the the, the closeness in the group. And uh, I, I remember the ride to the bus. Uh, we had put some video together to highlight it, and, and to music, to goals. And uh, I, I remember as the bus pulled up that the guys were just so ready to play after that bus ride there to, to the stadium. I remember the game being pretty much even throughout the 90 minutes, but there was this physical battle going on throughout the whole contest. Joey Franchino, of course, started with the Galaxy, ends up in New England. He's battling Kobe Jones all game long, and maybe because it was the final there were no red cards, but I thought at least the way Joey was playing against Kobe, there could have been at least a red card going the other way, or at least in the Galaxy's favor. That was a true battle between those two players. Well, it it was. It was a clothesline shot off. (laughs) <laughs> you know, arm come across and got Kobe in the throat, knocked him back. I remember it distinctly. So let's give New England credit. They battled us very, very well. Um, you know, they, uh, you know, if I, my memory serves me well, that was their first time ever in the MLS mm-hmm. Cup final. Um, they rose to the occasion as well defensively uh, to deny us uh, opportunities in that game. It was uh, a back and forth type of game, and you know, it was kind of almost a deja vu thing. After 90 minutes, you're saying, "Okay, this thing is going overtime again." You know, and and uh, you know, you're almost saying, "Here's four MLS Cups for the Galaxy, and and three of them are overtime." You know, and you're saying to yourself, "Oh my God!" You know, that's no good, and that's in the back of your head. And so you're really trying to uh, trying to get yourself really to a situation where you're saying, "Okay, boys, let's battle. We can do this. We've been here before." Let's just make sure we go out and, and do the job. And then I remember Winston Griffin's shot that hit the crossbar, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh, boy. I was in perfect line of that. And when that didn't go in, Ziggy and I looked at it, and Ziggy's favorite line was, well, sometimes you got to dodge some bullets. Well, if and, I, uh, that was one for sure. If I remember correctly, there was a corner kick uh, in the 113th minute that ended up hitting the bar and coming out to Chris Albright. 
and then the rest is pretty much history as it goes on to Tyrone Marshall, and then he sends it across to uh, Carlos Ruiz, who sent it home at that point. So the Galaxy dodged a couple of bullets in that game. It kind of went their way as far as posts and crossbars were concerned. Uh, so it was it was pretty tense all the way through. Well, you're right, Joe, and, and, and you know, sometimes when you relive a game, there's things you remember, and then there's things you conveniently forget. <laughs> uh, I do remember the shot that uh, hit the crossbar, and that counterattack, as quickly as it was, it's, it's always vividly slow motion in my mind because of how it, it got to, to you know, Albright found a way to get it to, to Tyrone, and then Tyrone hitting the good ball, and then when I saw a fish, you know, he had made, missed some chances earlier, right. and that's what probably made him special that year was that even though he missed his chances, he, he, he never psychologically gets down on himself. He's going to keep plugging and keep working nonstop. And when he hit that ball far post, I mean, it, when it went in, it, it, it was really kind of a funniest thing because I saw the players all going, and I'm thinking, okay, the traditional handshake to the opposing coach. But then I saw Ziggy <laughs> jump the board and take off on a, a sprint that I never saw him go so fast. So I said, well, I'm going to join in with the group, and I just, you know, joined in on the dog pile there at the end. But, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a great moment for the franchise. It was a great moment for, uh, I think, MLS soccer as well, the type of game that it, it gave the fans. And then to do it in front of 60-plus thousand uh, uh, was fantastic. To me, that championship pretty much set the benchmark going forward for what the organization was going to become. I know you guys had that Confederations Championship, all the other things, Supporter Shields and all division titles, whatever they might be. This had to happen in order for everything else to fall in line and maybe the dust to fall off those trophies as well. Well, I think so. I think you're right, Joe. I mean, yeah, we had won uh, the Open Cup the year previous mm -hmm. after losing in the final, and that kind of gave you a little bit good feeling of, uh, of winning that one. And at Cal State Fullerton against so actually a New England team, I think again, and and then and 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 then you know I I I thought that you know the winning the Confederations Cup was a fantastic achievement, but you know we also knew that there there was you know a strong belief that uh, AEG uh, Mr. Anschutz and Mr. Lightwicky were gonna you know saying that we're gonna build you guys a home the following year, and that gave them some momentum. Uh, as well, but you know when you look at uh, what the galaxy achieved in, in, in that decade, from say 2000 right on through to 2010, uh, was some great things, and um, it was uh, it was it was good to be a part of that team. I think that there was some some really good players that came out of that team that have done very well in their soccer careers, and uh, it was a good group. I, I think that was one of the keys I felt that. Uh, it became a really tight knit group, and I think it all started with that trip to Chile. I think you know when you go internationally and you put the players together in, in that environment, uh, it really brought, it, it brought the group together. So on Saturday we pretty much look back, but we're kind of opening a new chapter when we get a chance to actually honor a team from 10 years ago that's uh, that's what the nfl does that's what major league baseball does and and the other major sports in this country uh how are you going to feel on saturday when you see your former players well you know i, I think i'm going to feel uh very nostalgic you know i see a couple of them on occasions but to see a majority of them all together and to be all together to on, be honored in that situation uh i think it's going to be you know it's going to be fantastic to see them i mean as you know, Joe, you, you put a lot of hours in, and you were a part of that group. You you traveled to all the away games. You were there. We spent a lot of times in different hotels, different cities. You know, you, you really uh, you go through the the battles, and and you endure in the course of a year. And to to host the trophy after that year, uh, it was it was great, and uh, and it's been kind of nice to obviously uh, watch it. From another side now, and see him do it two more times. Uh, is uh, you're happy for the franchise, and I think that you know some of those players, you know, were really instrumental. You were happy for the, probably the Hartmans, the Sinfuegos, and the Jones, mm -hmm. who had been around for a long time, and obviously Mauricio and Kobe, uh, the originals from the '96 first team. Uh, so it was nice for those for those folks as well, you know that. Been such a backbone to the club, and 
And, uh, you know, I think that one of the things that was so evident to me was that you're also happy for the fans because, uh, you know, the Galaxy fans have been great uh, supporters, you know, from the Rose Bowl era to the uh, to the era now at the Home Depot Center. So you, you're happy for them to, to, you know, be able to feel the championship feeling. And what a year it was for Kobe Jones being able to be part of that U.S. national team that went on to the quarterfinals and then coming back and finishing off in the fall with, with his first MLS Cup. That had to be amazing for him. Yeah, it was. I, I think you know, it was an amazing year for him, uh, and, and he gave a, a, a tremendous effort. I think that you know um, the whole celebration uh, for him, I think, was that I, I felt that you know that was what we needed from him to come back from the World Cup and, and, and to say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna really be a, a, a true leader in, in, in my performance, and I thought that he, he really exemplified that. Obviously, the year that uh, Carlos Ruiz had was, uh, was fantastic. I think you know you, you can't single out different people, but I think that you know the, the whole core of, of the team, you know, the Ezra Hendricksons and the, and Sasha Victorine and Peter Vines, Mauricio Sanfuegos, Alexi Lalas, you know, Simon Elliott. Uh, Brian Moreno. Mullen, I could go on and on. <laughs> I mean, those those guys really did a good job from start to finish, and uh, you know, and, and that's what you really need, you know. And, and and the challenge always, again and again, when you look at a season, is uh, just you keep plugging away and never giving up. And I think that 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 group of players uh, exemplify that. And Saturday we get to celebrate that group once again. It's a 5:30 alumni game. Uh, against the under-18 Galaxy Academy team. That gets underway at 5.30. 7.30, of course, the, the senior club, the Galaxy, take on uh, Toronto at 7.30 at the Home Depot Center. Tickets are available at lagalaxy.com or by calling 877-3-GALAXY. We have work to do, you and I, on Saturday night, so don't, don't get too nostalgic on me. No, no, no. I'm looking forward to the game, Joe, and I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, the whole situation as far as, uh, you know, seeing the guys and being a part of all that, but I'm also really excited about this year's Galaxy team as well. I think this is a team that, you know, right now is, is, is fought, fought back a long ways to get back on, on track and uh, and get themselves going, and, and uh, they put themselves in a, in a good situation right now, and, and with the remaining games they have, they've got a lot to play for. Ralph and I will have the broadcast for you at AM 1150, beginning at 7.30, also globally at LAGalaxy.com. Mr. Perez, thank you for taking the time today. My pleasure, Joe. For Ralph Perez, Joe Tutino, thank you for once again making Galaxy All Access part of your day.